Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church on this beautiful Lord's Day. We welcome every one of you, members and visitors alike. You that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens. And if you get on your phone, you in the radio listening audience, and call a friend, especially a shut-in, and have them to tune in and get this hour coming up, I do believe we can be an inspiration to them. You'll be doing them a favor, be doing us a favor. We appreciate it so very much. Take your Bible and turn, would you please, to Revelation chapter 20. I'm speaking to you on this subject, the day when lost sinners will be let out of hell. You may say, now, Preach Edwards, I didn't know they'd be let out. Yes, they will. There's coming a day when lost sinners will be let out of hell, and then we'll tell you what's going to happen to them then. So you turn to Revelation chapter 20. Now, this message and the music today will be on cassette tape. It'll be tape number 174. We send these tape out to you for a gift of $3 for each tape. The money's used to help defray the rate of expense. And I hope that you write in and get this tape and others. We have the several others. Let me give you just a few of the numbers. Tape number 127, Where is the Beef? Tape number 120, The Jailhouse Rock. <laughs> tape number 117, Bones in the Church. Tape number 115, Two Fools, a Hen Peck Man. Someone was telling me the other day about this woman, you know, had that commercial, Where is the Beef for Wendy's? Said she got killed the other day. She was hit by a Big Mac. So I guess maybe, well, that's just what they said. I don't know. All right, so you write in for these tape, and if she got hit by a Big Mac, maybe a uh, Big Mac might be a little heavy. I don't know. I'm not advertising Wendy's or Big Mac, see the one. i just tell you what I heard. All right, turn to Revelation chapter 20. I don't want to be like the old country preacher many years ago is, Hot summertime, he's out preaching in this country church. He didn't have sense enough knowing to stop. And real hot, the little building was packed out, and he was up preaching. He'd preached an hour, gone into the second hour. Some old fellow sitting in the back, and he'd got tired of it. He said, I can't stand no more of that. I, I, I'll just put a stop to it. And the man had preached about two hours, getting louder and louder. He just reached back and pulled a board off the back of the old church building and threw it at the preacher. But he missed the preacher and hit a deacon sitting on the front row right in the back of the head and knocked him as cold as a cucumber. And they ran over some of the other deacons and ladies began to pour water in his face and fan him and lift him up and trying to bring him to himself. That preacher's getting louder and louder. After a while, they kind of revived the old deacon and he kind of shook his head. He said, somebody hit me again. I can still hear him. <laughs> All right, so we... I won't be so like, so like that uh, preacher and preach three hours. But you turn to Revelation chapter 20, and I'll read a few verses found there, and then uh, bring the message. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. Now I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, that was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now today, speaking on the subject, the day when lost sinners will be let out of hell. Now according to this Bible, hell is down in the heart of the earth. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 55 and verse 15, Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. In Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 24, the way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. Now hell is beneath. Hell is in the heart of this earth. 
When sinners die, they go down into the bowels of this earth, and there they will remain unto the end of the millennium. At the end of the millennium, they'll be let out of hell. That will be the time when sinners will be let out of hell. They'll remain there until the end of the millennium. Remember, God's people will come out of, of the grave, the bodies will come out of the grave and join the souls coming out of paradise at the rapture and at the first resurrection, but not sinners. Sinners will be let out of hell at the end of the millennium. And when they're let out of hell, they'll stand before the judge. And there they'll be judged. They'll not be judged to determine whether or not they saved the lost. They determine that here upon this earth. Some people have the idea, if their good works uh, outdo the bad works that they did on the earth, or outweigh their bad deeds, then they'll go to heaven. If not, they'll go to hell. That is not true. That's not according to the Bible. Now you determine where you spend the eternity before you leave your body on this earth. If you die without God, hell is your destination. If you die in your faith, in the faith of Jesus Christ, heaven will be your home. You must keep that in mind. So these sinners will be let out of hell where they are now at the present time. Remember, they'll not be let out now until at the end of the millennium. That's a little more than a thousand years away from now. And then they'll come out. They have more than a thousand years yet to remain in hell. And then they'll be let out and will stand before God. Number one, it will be the day of judgment. Now we talk about judgment. We're judgment-headed people, every one of us. There's two judgments, the judgment for the saint and the one for the sinner. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, As it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. You cannot deviate around that judgment. It is coming. There's no way you can get around it. It's upon other men wants to die, and after that, the judgment. A man bragging one time about the fact he didn't mind dying. Some kind fellow said, now listen. But he said, have you ever thought about judgment after death? He said, no, I really haven't thought about that. He said, you better think about that. Now, people that brag about not being afraid to die need to think a little bit about the judgment. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, and the dead were judged. Now he's talking about the dead in trespass and sins that died, but determined his degree of punishment in hell, not the time element, but the degree of punishment in, in the lake of fire. Secondly, all the unsaved will be judged. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, he said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Every lost sinner, I don't care who he is, whether he's a pauper or president, I don't care how pauper he may be, how wealthy he may be, every sinner just alike will stand before God in the day of judgment. He may be a wealthy man on this earth now. He may be very popular. He may even be a, what they call a movie star. Or he may be a great politician. But beloved, when he stands before God, at the great white throne is going to look just like everyone else. They'll all stand there alike according to the Bible. There'll be no saint there to encourage them to help them. There's no way they can be helped or encouraged. No saint will face this judgment. The Bible said the Christian, the saint of God, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now we will go to this judgment seat about a thousand years before the sinner will go to his judgment bar of God according to the Bible. And so remember then the Christians must appear at the judgment seat of Christ. That will be during the tribulation period that's run its course upon the earth. We'll be in heaven at the judgment seat of Christ. And then about a thousand years later, hell will belch out all the sinners that died and went to hell. And they'll stand at the great white throne judgment bar of God they to be judged. And so the, the unsaved will be judged. They'll be judged. Now in this life, we do know a lot of people has to stand before the judge to be judged for crimes and the law breaking that to do, but they'll stand before a different judge at that time. Number three, we want to find out who that judge will be. That judge will be none other than Jesus Christ, God's Son. The Bible says in John chapter 5 and verse 22, For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. 
Now, every unsaved person that's now listening to the sound of my voice, if you die without God, there's a day coming when you'll stand before Jesus Christ and he'll be there at the great white throne and he will be your judge according to the Bible. You may take his name in vain now. You may say, I don't believe in Jesus. I won't have him to reign over me. I won't have him to rule me. I won't have him to come into my heart. But there's a day coming when he will be your judge. You got to stand there before him. There's no way in the world you can get around it. I may be speaking to someone today out in the radio listening audience. You've been out drinking last night. You lived a life of sin. You now maybe have whiskey on your breath. Maybe you've been fussing on your wife and children. Maybe you've been cursing, taking God's name in vain. Maybe you went out last night, committed sin you're ashamed of. There's a day coming when you'll stand before Jesus Christ and look him in the face and give an account unto God. God's going to judge you according to your sins. Somebody said, well, if I'm lost and going to hell, I might as well go ahead and, and commit all the sins I want to, do all the weakness I want to commit, and do all the evil I can, and enjoy everything I can because I'm going to hell anyway. You better change your mind. You're going to be judged at the great white throne according to your sins to determine your degree of punishment. That's old Adolf Hitler responsible for 40 million people killed in World War II. Responsible for six million Jews being put to death. A very wicked man, very wicked man, died and went to hell without a doubt. There's a good moral mother that lived a good, clean, honest life. Tried to teach a family the best she knew how right from wrong. Never went to church and never got saved. But she was good to her husband. Maybe went to church occasionally. Good to her neighbors. Do anything she could to help them out. Help people in time of sickness. Good to help out in the community. Lived a good, clean life. Never went out and engaged in wicked sin, as some call sin today. And that good moral mother raised a family, has white as snow, lived a clean life, and she dies. Where does she go? She goes to hell because she did not get saved. Now, do you think a just and holy God is going to have that mother to stand by Adolf Hitler in the day of judgment and give them the same degree of punishment Absolutely not. Beloved, listen to me. There'd be no point in the judgment if everybody received the same degree of punishment. That has nothing to do with the time element. Hell is forever. The lake of fire is forever. But the judgment is for a purpose. Why judge people if there's not going to be something done about the judgment? That is, there'll be a degree of punishment for those in the lake of fire. That good moral woman will not be punished with the same degree, the old Adolf Hitler be screaming and old Stalin and all the liberals and the atheists and the ungodly and, and all these people that hate God, it's going to be different according to the word of God. But they'll stand before God and be judged. No person can go to heaven. I don't care how clean they are, how good they are, how kind they may be. No one can go to heaven unless they get saved. It's impossible. Jesus said, if you believe not I am he, you shall die in your sins. That's no way to go to heaven unless you get saved. Number four, it will be a righteous judgment. Now you'll have to admit that many of our judges today are crooked, so crooked, they have to screw their britches on when they get up every morning. But you have others that are honest, that are upright, that are Christians, that uh, love uh, righteousness, that want to do that which is right. And I'm not critical toward good judges, clean, honest, upright judges, but you have some, all they're out for is the money. They'll appeal these uh, crimes of criminals and, and they'll uh, uh, take bribes and they'll do everything they can to clear the criminal and to turn the criminals loose on the street. And it all depends on how much money you got and your prestige and your popularity as to how you're going to come out when you stand before them. Now those judges do not deal out a righteous judgment. Now they'll stand before God and God will deal their righteous judgment out as far as he's concerned. They'll give an account unto God for their crooked uh, uh, judgeship while they were in that position on the earth. Every judge has a double responsibility. Not only is he going to answer to God Almighty for his soul, but he's going to answer to God Almighty for every decision that he makes while he's sitting on the beach as a judge. He's going to face that in the day of judgment. If he deal according to righteousness, that which is right, do that which is right, it'll be all right. 
But if he's crooked, if he deals out uh, partiality toward human beings because of who they are, when he faces God, it's going to be a bad and sad day for him. But this will be a righteous judgment. In John chapter 5 and verse 30, I judge and my judgment is just. Jesus Christ said, I judge and my judgment is just. Now when he mets out his penalty, it'll be just. It'll be exactly right. It'll be honest. It'll be true. And that's not the case here in America. Some few days ago, you heard about the young man up north that the young girl claimed she lied and claimed she was raped by this young man. And they tried to get him out of prison. And the judge said the girl wasn't telling the truth, that the man did rape the girl. Well, nobody knows the truth of the matter. I know I don't. And they probably don't either. But God knows. God knows. And when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, then God knows all about us. And we'll be judged according to righteousness. In Acts chapter 17 and verse 31, Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness, by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. God said, My time's coming. I'll be the judge one of these days. A lot of these are crooked uh, lawyers, and thank God for the good honest ones and the straight ones, but a lot of these crooked ones and a lot of these crooked judges uh, one of these days, God will take care uh, of their record and God will deal with them and be sad when they face God. Number five, God's record books will be open. You may say, now, Preacher Edwards, you mean God has some books? He's keeping books. He certainly has. He's certainly keeping books. And sinners will be let out of hell. And when they're let out of hell, they'll move to the judgment bar of God at the end of the millennium and they'll be facing a judge and that judge will be Jesus Christ, and they'll be facing some books. And in that book, God has a record of all the sins they ever committed from the time they came into the world until they died. Now you think about that. You may say, now preach, Edwards, you mean all these things I've done, people don't know about it, and these wicked sins I committed, I'm going to have to face them at the judgment bar of God. You sure are. You certainly will as a sinner. The only way you can get that record clear is to get saved. You'll get saved. The blood of Jesus Christ will clear you of all of those past sins. Will cleanse you from them. But if you don't get saved, every sin you committed. You might think you've gotten by with murder. You've gotten by with other kind of sins. Robbery, thefts, cursing, so forth. You think, well, I've gotten by with that. That happened ten years ago. No, you haven't. God has that in His book. And you'll face it again at the judgment bar of God. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12. I saw the dead, that's the lost sinner, small and great, that's a big shot and a little shot, stand before God, and the B-double-O-K-S books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the B-double-O-K-S. The dead, the lost sinner, will be judged out of the things that's written in the books. You may say, preach every what's been written. All the sins you committed as a sinner, every time you got drunk, every time you stole something, every time you beat your wife, every time you gambled, every time you um, went out and committed a sin, all of that's been put in the books. And you face those books and you face that record and God will remind you of it at the judgment bar of God and there's not a word you can say. You can't make an excuse. You can't say, Lord, I don't remember that. I'm not guilty. You can't open your mouth. You'll have to stand there and admit that it's a truth that you did that. God's going to read it to you out of the books, he tells us here. They're written in the books according to their works, their evil deeds, what they did. In verse 13, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell lived up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. All sinners are coming out of the sea. All sinners are coming out of the graveyards. They're all coming out. They'll stand before God. And be judged according to the sins, according to the evil works, the evil deeds that they committed on this earth. I'm glad, Brother Brock, back yonder in 1940, that God cleaned my slate, that God washed away all my sins. I committed from the time I came into this world until I was uh, uh, 21 years old. God washed them away because of pretty black ones back there and some pretty dirty ones I wouldn't want to face. And, uh, but God took care of that. There at the, when I got saved, you may say, preacher, you haven't done anything wrong since then. Well, certainly I have. 
But I've asked God to forgive me and help me and give me strength. And, and you as a Christian should do the same. If you find out that you did something, committed the sin of omission, uh, commission, or ask God to forgive you. He said if we'll confess our sins, His faith and just forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And you can stand before God as clean as a pen. And you won't have to worry about the judgment bar of God. Then number six, sinners will stand before God and the bodies they died in. Now that will be a terrible sight. Now you don't have in the Bible where these sinners will get a new body. Now the saint will. The saint that stands at the judgment seat of Christ, the Christian will be there in a glorified body. But are you listening? Every sinner is going to stand before God in that body he died in. If he died all beat up and drunk and he's going to stand there with bleary eyes and a beaten up body. Some time ago I saw a wreck out here in front of the church and that Jesus saved sign was shining right in the windshield. And there lay a man and woman dead, killed instantly in a car wreck. There were whiskey bottles, beer bottles. There they had a terrible look on their face. When they stand before God, they go going to stand there in that body that I saw them in, there in that automobile. The same body you die in is the body you're going to stand in at the judgment bar of God. Right there in that old body, wretched, sinful, wicked, put a beat up or whatnot, you're going to stand in that body. God's not going to give you a new body to judge you in. You stand in that old body you died in, according to the Bible. In Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2, And many of them that sleep in the dust there shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. As you stand there with that wicked crowd and you see those old bodies you all died in, you're going to be so ashamed. And then as God begins to read out your record, you're going to be so ashamed. That's the judgment bar of God. And you'll stand there and you'll listen and you'll look at each other. And you think, what a fool I was. What a fool I've been. I could have been saved. What a fool I was to die without God. Came so near of being saved and died and went to hell. And now standing here to be judged, to be sentenced to the lake of fire. You're going to call yourself a fool. And you will be a foolish person at that time. In John chapter 5 verses 28 and 29. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. In which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So God is telling us how that sin is coming out. He's coming out unto the resurrection of damnation. And stand before God with red bleary eyes. Maybe with a beaten up body. Stand there. Wicked sinner. Died without God. And God will call his name and read his record. And met out his judgment. Number seven. There will be a sentence to the lake of fire. Now the Bible says there's a lake of fire. And that lake of fire is waiting. It is waiting for people to be cast into. The first ones to go into the lake of fire. Will be the beast and the false prophets. They will be cast into that lake of fire. And then in Revelation chapter 20 verses 14 and 15. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That's. The law of sinners, death and hell, that's people that came out of hell and those that died in trespassing sins. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. As God checks the record, he's going to look at this record and say, My, you committed a lot of sins. You did a lot of evil. You stole this. You robbed this man. You curse here, you gamble there, and you've done all, you commit all these sins. You made light of the preachers and the Christians. You wouldn't go to church. All of this is down here, and God will met out the judgment. But then God turns to another person standing there, and God looks in that book, and he doesn't see all of those sins like that. That's that good moral mother I was talking about. There she stands, she hasn't gone out and lived wicked and ungodly, been on dope and whiskey and things of that type and went out and lived the life of a harlot. She hasn't done all of that. And she's standing there. She lived a good, clean life. And she was good to her husband. She was good to her children. She was good to her neighbors. And she liked to help people when they're sick. And she'd give away a lot of money. Maybe give some to the church. Now what's going to happen? And God looks at that book and says, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. God doesn't see a whole lot against her record, but he turns, he looks at the book of life. Your name is not here. I'm sorry. You got to go to the lake of fire. 
And God sentences her to the lake of fire, right along with the other wicked that died without God. Isn't that awful? Some of you good mothers out there listening to me in the radio, listen to us right now. You know you ought to be in the house of God. You know you should be serving Jesus. You know you ought to be saved. Some of you men ought to be ashamed of yourself. Your little children there playing around your knees and you won't take them to church. You let them grow up and die and go to hell. And you're going to, you're going to be sorry about that. God's holding you men responsible. You need to get right with God. Get your family in church. You don't have long to live. It's closer than you think. You have no promise of tomorrow. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're going to have to face God about this matter. Be bad enough for you to be there, give an account for your sins, and have your a judgment meted out to you. But that stands your children. Some on one side and some on the other. They turn, look at you as if to say, Daddy, if you would have been the right kind of person, you'd have carried me to church and led me to Jesus, but you let me die and go to hell, I'll hate you forever. Some of the daughters stand there and say, Mother, if you'd have done right and carried me to church and lived for God and taught me about Jesus, I wouldn't be standing here. I'm going to hate you forever. And they're all bounced off into the lake of fire. That will be an awful thing. Yes, sinners will be let out of hell. And they'll go to the judgment bar of God. And they stand there to be judged. That was an old country doctor one time. Lived out in the country among a lot of poor people. And he went day and night to minister to his people in the community. He loved them. A real doctor loves his patients. Just like a real man of God loves his church and God's people. And those people would come. He'd go at the midnight hour, rain or shine. And they'd minister to the people in the community. And many of them couldn't pay their bills. They're so poor they could hardly live. And then the old man died. And his son came to his office and got the record book and said, Well, my daddy is dead and there's a lot of people owes him. And I'm going to go and collect that money. I'm going to make it rough on them. They got to get that money. They owed it to my daddy and he's dead. And now I'm entitled to it. And he opened up that book and he looked at name after name. John Jones, too poor to pay. Marked, paid in full. Joe Brown, too poor to pay for his doctor bill. Paid in full. Mary Jones, too poor to pay. Had no money. It's now paid in full. All down that record book he read name after name. And at the end of every name, he said, paid in full. At the bottom of that book, he signed his name in big letters before he left this world. That's exactly what Jesus did for you. Amen. On Calvary, he paid your sin debt in full. Amen. Now, you can accept that and go to heaven, or you can reject that and go to hell and stand at the judgment bar of God and spend eternity in hell and the lake of fire. It's left entirely up to you. You don't have to go to hell, but God's not going to force you to get saved. But God will never turn anyone away that wants to be saved. Thank you. You've listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, I pray that you'll take the message and use it. Save somebody today, Father, out in the radio listen audience. Speak to hearts here in this auditorium. Get glory to yourself. Thank you you saved us one day. Blotted out our sins. We won't have to face them. At the judgment bar of God, we're so glad. Now, Lord, may your name be honored. May your word be honored as we give the invitation in Christ's name. Amen. Debbie's playing for us as she plays on the instrument. If you're here unsaved, or if you're here backslidden on God, or if you're here and you want to join this church and we receive members, you may come while she plays a couple of stanzas. Go right ahead, Debbie. I brought the message that God laid on my heart. It's up to you now to do something about it. I've done what little that I can do. And you don't do something that's be between you and God about that. And I hope that if God is speaking, you respond. That you'll come forward if you want to be saved. to come back to God and join the church. How about it? Will you come? 